friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley, if you're new here, and in this video I thought I would go into more detail why we switched away from the good and the beautiful in math and switched to math with confidence. So just a short little backstory, um, this is my third year homeschooling, my oldest son. We did preschool, kindergarten, and then now we're doing first grade this year. And we used the good and the beautiful math for kindergarten, and I was pretty sure we were going to use it for first grade. I bought the math box and we really enjoyed the kindergarten math. And so I touched on my update video, my August homeschool update video that we switched. And I believe I told you we switched to math with confidence. So I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about why we did that and then share our like first thoughts of the curriculum. So we've been using math with confidence for almost four weeks now. We are on the fourth week and we both really, really like it. Shane loves it, absolutely loves it. Um, I'd say he probably likes it better than he liked The Good and the Beautiful, for sure. I will say that I like it because it's working really well for him. I also really see the value in the type of teaching that it's doing, which I will go into more detail, um, versus the way that The Good and the Beautiful taught. Um, I had heard a ton about how The Good and the Beautiful doesn't go deep enough, and I just never really understood what they meant by that. Like, I felt like, no, like, they teach enough. Like, it seems to be, like, they review everything so much that it's got to go in deep. But now that we're doing math with confidence, I, I really understand what they mean. And I'm not saying this to mean that The Good and the Beautiful is not good at teaching math by any stretch. I think certain kids will learn better with certain math curriculums for sure. And I wouldn't even say that I would never use The Good and the Beautiful again. But for this um, grade level, for sure, I think that this is a better fit for us. So for the first three weeks, they call them units. Um, there, I think there's 30, 32 units to the whole thing. So we've done three. And it was basically like a ton of review at first. And even still in the fourth unit, it's still a lot of review. It's We're doing addition now. We were doing numbers up to 10 before. We were doing a little bit of um, money with the numbers up to 10 and just kind of really like solidifying those numbers. And so the good and the beautiful went a lot further with that in kindergarten. So it's, it's a ton of review for my son and it was exactly what he needed at the time because when we were, we were starting up the good and the beautiful again, we had start done like three weeks of it at the end of his kindergarten year. And so we were on like the fourth week or something like that. And it, he just was struggling a lot with it. He, I think the biggest problem, which I think I might've said in the other video is that it kind of just introduces a ton of topics at once. And it's like, it's supposed to be spiral, which it is, which I really liked in kindergarten. But I think for the first grade, at least in the beginning of it, which is my complaint, the beginning of the curriculum is too spiral. I really enjoy the spiral when it gets like further in, but my biggest complaint is that they don't stay in one spot long enough to go deep. Like I, maybe I'll have to, I think I'm gonna do a, a full video on like a math with confidence versus the good and the beautiful for first grade. So I can show you side by side what I mean exactly, but they just expect them to remember everything that they learned last year. Although they say that they don't expect that when you read through like the introduction and everything. And so it's a bit confusing because then when you go to do the lesson, they're asking them to do things that they should have already learned last year, but maybe not have mastered. And so some kids, maybe it would be fine with for their personality where like they don't mind if they can't get it perfectly right every time. But for my son, it was it was discouraging, I think, because it, they wanted him to skip count by five, skip count by tens. They wanted him to remember like a ton of things that he's just a bit rusty on. So could we have kept going with it and it would have been fine? Yeah, I think definitely because they do practice it a ton more in the curriculum, but it just didn't feel like a good fit at the moment. We also switched away from the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts in the beginning of the year because of that kind of same thing they didn't do any review really there was like a few lessons of review and then it was like jumping straight into new curricula or new material and that's partly my own fault for not keeping him up to speed on what he learned last year he like kind of has forgotten a lot of it I need to like review a lot of it now that's what we're doing with our reading and so I, I suppose if I would have done the same thing with math he would have been fine 
But I feel like that's like you have to continue, especially with math, you have to continue it throughout the summer. And it's just not like feasible to do that for me in, in this season of life. Like we have a lot of things going on in the summer. And so I can't like keep him reviewing everything that he learned in kindergarten all the way throughout the summer. Um, and I don't know if that's like to say that he didn't learn it well enough then in kindergarten. Although again, like the kindergarten curriculum said that he didn't have to master those things. Although at the end of the year, he knew how to skip count by fives. He knew how to skip count by tens, but he must not have like learned it to where it like absorbed deep into his brain where he can then do it no matter how long it had been since he's done it last. And so that's why my, my like first thoughts, I suppose then on um, math with confidence is that I'm really enjoying how deep it's going. It, they play a ton of games. They play a lot of games. They play a lot of like activities where we're doing a lot of things with our hands. There is not a lot of writing in the book, which is very different from The Good and the Beautiful. They definitely had some activities as well. And I really liked the activities they did, but it wasn't, it wasn't the same as Math with Confidence. So he's definitely enjoying this because it's a lot more hands-on. It's, it's, it's so much simpler where we're going to be building on top of um, what he's already learned, but just such a, like a slower pace where he's just like having to remember, like they want him to master the pairs of 10 um, before kind of moving on to another thing sort of like they it's it's still a sort of spiral which I like because they're not like saying he has to 100% master it but they do it a lot in the same week and then they'll keep reviewing it as they go forward and so I suppose that's why that's the biggest reason why we switched is because the good and the beautiful just did too much spiral too soon it just was like every single day it was like we're this isn't actually the way it is but like it feels like every single day they're reviewing like the calendar, they're reviewing um, money, they're reviewing skip counting, they're reviewing like adding on three. And it's just like, it's just so much, I feel like for him to have to like, remember all those things on the same day rather than introduce the, the calendar and then focus on that for a few weeks and then, you know, move on from there. Uh, so I feel like that's what's good math confidence is going to be like and I feel like that's going to be really good for him. So I guess I'll just share a few more first thoughts um, on math with confidence before I wrap up the video. I feel like I've been talking really fast so hopefully this video is not like five minutes long but um, something else I will say about math with confidence that I like um, but I don't love I suppose is that it's it's obviously like if you've looked into this at all it's it's very different from um, the good and the beautiful where let me get you to the beginning. It's like, it's black and white. It is pretty boring in that sense. Um, and it's a lot of like, I think it would be really good for me if I were to like look at it before I sat down with him so I knew what I was teaching. Although it's not necessary. I don't, I actually don't look at it before I sit down. Um, but sometimes I feel a bit like, like I'm scrambling a bit to try to like lay everything out, make sure I have all the supplies. Although I did do what they said and created the little math box with all the stuff he needs, but it's like sometimes you have to like create different cards, which you totally could do on the spot, but I don't know how to explain it. I don't like love the format of it um, just because I'm so used to like the Good and the Beautiful and it's just open and go. You don't have to worry about doing anything and the Good and the Beautiful is really beautiful. Um, so yeah, that is... I guess the one thing I don't love about it, but it's like such a minor thing compared to what I do like about it and that I do really think it's gonna be a good fit for him. With his reading, I feel like we'll probably go back and forth between all that reading and uh, The Good and the Beautiful, but I feel like with Math with Confidence, I highly doubt we'll probably use The Good and the Beautiful again. Maybe as summer review, I'll have him go through the like um, first grade workbook here and there, obviously not the whole thing but I just don't think there's time in our day to like do that. And I don't feel any like, I don't think there would be any benefit to be going back and forth between this and that, where I think with the reading, there is a benefit to going back and forth with All About Reading and The Good and the Beautiful, because The Good and the Beautiful has other aspects to it, like geography and writing and spelling and All About Reading only has the reading instruction. So I do feel like if you, your child really likes to learn like, with their hands, they like you like to like play as they're learning. I think that math with confidence would be a really good fit. I will probably do, like I said, at some point, a good and the beautiful versus math with confidence video, 
probably once we've done it for a bit longer because I feel like I don't know it well enough to do uh, that type of video yet. But if you have any questions about either of the curriculum, uh, let me know and I will definitely answer them for you if I can. And, and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.